building audiences is the new form of leverage and YouTube is the perfect place to do that. So a reasonable question to ask is whether you should post YouTube shorts to build and monetize audiences, but no one has answered this. So I've posted 847 shorts on four different YouTube channels to get some first hand data and I've done some of my own digging and I have found an answer. My conclusion is that there are three people who should post YouTube shorts and you are probably not one of them. Understand these three foundational findings and you'll finally know for sure whether YouTube shorts will generate the income that you deserve. Okay. We posted 847 YouTube shorts across four channels. For transparency, these are the four channels. Two of them I manage myself, and to make things a little bit more interesting, the other two were managed by a self-proclaimed YouTube short guru that I met on Instagram. And I paid him a little bit more money than I was comfortable with to do so. So while I let my data guys crunch numbers in the background, well, let's be honest, there's no data guys just me. It's important to realize that this isn't only about finding the answers. To find the answers, we need to ask the right questions. And in this case, the right question to ask is, does a short form view equal a long form view? Because we know when done correctly, long form content works. It gets the right attention, which leads to views and revenue. So if short form did the same, then you know, they're worth doing. The answer to this question lies in an example. Imagine you watch 60 minutes of content on TV, on YouTube long form and YouTube shorts. In the 60 minutes, you watch one episode of Our Planet, five long form YouTube videos and 200 YouTube shorts. Let's grade these sessions in two different sections, relationship building and attention quality. On TV, you have 60 minutes listening to David Attenborough's voice. You know David pretty well. And by the end, you and David have a pretty strong parasocial relationship. A parasocial relationship is like a one-sided relationship. I know David Attenborough, he doesn't know me. You know me, I probably don't. Well, actually I do probably know you. My sub count is about as small as an ant's lunchbox. Anyway, on YouTube long form, you watch five videos created by five different creators. You know these creators pretty well. And the parasocial relationship isn't as strong as that with David Attenborough, but it's still strong nonetheless. And on YouTube shorts, you watch 200 short form videos by 200 different creators all competing for your attention. It's highly probable that you won't remember any of them, which means that the parasocial relationship that you guys have is about as strong as a jellyfish's punch. So how does this relate to the quality of attention? Strong relationships lead to strong attention. Good relationships lead to good attention. Poor relationships lead to a lifetime of misery. It's definitely a bit dramatic there. Advertisers know this and the ad time correlates to this attention quality. On TV, you'll watch 15 minutes of ads. On YouTube long form, you'll watch probably five minutes of ads. And on shorts, you'll watch seconds of ads. Cash is king, as they say. So where do you think the advertisers allocate the majority of their budget? So is a long form view on YouTube equal to a YouTube shorts view? Well, from a relationship perspective, no. An attention perspective, no. And a monetization perspective. The highest performing videos on on shorts for YouTube has 40 million views. It's barely made us any money at all. Thanks, Chris. So the answer I've concluded is no. So generally speaking, a long form view is more valuable than a short form view. But that doesn't mean that a short form view has no value at all. YouTube and TikTok may figure out the monetization element. And even if they don't, we still have people building massive personal and faceless brands using short form content. And even from a YouTube automation perspective, we have this guy. And now earns more than $400 a week. Also, one of my 840 YouTube shorts just popped off, so maybe we're not seeing the full picture here. Let's sort the argument by looking at our second finding and the strongest indicator of success as a whole on YouTube attention. In a previous video, we talked about attention in a lot of detail, but here I'm going to give you the TLDR version. There is good and bad attention. This right here is bad attention, a once off or a non recurring view. A good attention graph looks like this, and this is where you're farming recurring views for a long period of time. So can shorts get us the right attention? At its core, short form content is a discovery based system, meaning you don't choose what you watch. Because it takes the viewing decision out of the hands of the viewer, it relies on a very smart algorithm them to make those decisions for us. As a result, short form content is highly optimized, meaning creators have to use retention tactics to keep you watching for as long as possible. 
and these retention tactics work. But here's the issue. In large volumes, like a 60 minute YouTube binge, these tactics and tricks overload the brain. It leads to fried minds. And when you look at the graph, you'll struggle massively to get recurring attention because you're competing with 200 other creators and you get lost in a sea of dopamine. And if you thought competing with 200 other people is bad, try this. Even if you get that attention, the odds of that attention sticking is so small because the viewer's intention is probably misaligned with your goal. Shorts are designed to kill boredom and in my book, boredom scrolling will never beat the intentional search scrolling. So can shorts get us the right attention? It, no, it's not very likely. The results don't only show in the creator's performance, but in the company's performance, with Meta stopping Instagram real creator fund and TikTok not being profitable yet. And this brings us up to finding number three, which is something that people often overlook when talking about this subject. Is short form content as a whole going away? people are clearly addicted to it. So it will serve some form of purpose in the future. And I think if it's gonna be anywhere, it's gonna be on YouTube. Because the key to unlocking the value of shorts lies in the link between short form content and long form content. The marriage between the discoverability of short form and the intentional focus of long form has huge potential, turning bad attention into good attention. This is good for the advertisers and it's good for the creators. Because YouTube already has long form content down and has built its entire business around it, I find it hard to believe that companies like TikTok in the long term will compete with that. So for me right now, it is worth posting short form content if I can convert that bad attention into good attention. To do this, I need to get the attention in the first place. So let's see how the 847 shorts performed. So the self-proclaimed guru has had a fantastic performance with one channel being permanently banned for copyright violations and the second channel achieving a whopping 30,000 views. I mean, surely grammar like this deserves more views. Great value for money don't trust strangers on the internet people, including me. In my own channels, I posted less videos and I got five times the number of views. Could I have done a better job if I put more time into it? I really do hope so. Is it as easy as they say to get short form views? No. So the lesson to be learned here is number one, just please post original content. And number two, you execute on your plan, which we talked about in the previous video to find out what videos performed well, double down on those videos, find a format that works and just rinse and repeat. But let's say you find the magic recipe from the very start and you start getting loads of views. Is it worth posting short form content over long form content? I see three different people who will benefit from posting YouTube shorts. The first person is somebody who has a very strong call to action. So if you are directly selling a product like drop shipping or an e-commerce or trying to get leads for a consultancy business, I think it's a good avenue to go down. The second person is somebody who can convert bad attention to good attention. Short form viewers to long form. And personally, I don't think YouTube has built the necessary features to really make this possible yet. And the third person is somebody who's just doing this for fun, who doesn't care about making money. And you never know, you might even strike it big. Otherwise macro, I don't really see this being beneficial at all because when you compare short form content to long form content, only one of them ticks all the boxes for me. The reward is much bigger with long form, but it does come at a price. It's so much harder. If you want to get ahead of 95% of people in just 10 minutes, I click on this video up here. That's all from me. We'll see you in the next one. Slow.